The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> It's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of a complete line of famous quality food products. Now let's see how things are going with The Great Gildersleeve. Yes, it's been a long, hard day. A long, hard week. The great man comes trudging home from the office, and hardly has the door opened when word goes out over the grapevine. Your uncle seems a little tired this evening, Miss Marjorie, so I wouldn't go cutting up any dye dough. Uncle's tired tonight, Leroy, so watch it. You better beat it, Craig. Hunk's on the warpath. Dinner is a silent meal. Marjorie is solicitous of her uncle's wants. And Leroy eats with cautious daintiness. After it's over, the storm cloud, which has been hovering over the dining table, moves into the living room. Gildersleeve flops down in his easy chair. Gee. For a moment, he just sits there, and then he begins. Where's the evening paper? Confound it. Where's the evening paper? I don't ask much of you children, but one thing I do ask. When I come home at night all tired out, I want the evening paper. You hear that, Leroy? Now, where is it? You're sitting on it. Oh. <laughs> Fine place for it. Don't mind me. I'm nobody. I just pay the bills around here, that's all. I come home here all tired out. All I ask is to read the evening <laughs> UNO crisis looms. World peace at stake. Little hope in housing shortage seen by official. Riots in Far East as Manchurian tension grows. War inevitable, says Congressman Rumbauer. Preparation our only hope. Weapons more fearful than atom bombs seen by experts. I found it. Turn on the radio, Leroy. Okay. Trouble, trouble, that's all they give you. I just won't read it, that's all. I just won't read it. From home here at night, all tired out, I sit down, and what do I get? Trouble. I thought the war was over. Of 1918, I thought we... when the world held such hope for the future, I wish that I could hold out such hope today. I cannot. Yes, my friends, it's the old, old story. The story of man's inhumanity to man. Starvation, pestilence, fear, and hate. These ride the earth today like the four horsemen of the well-known apocalypse, spreading the seeds of war. <laughs> What's to be done about it? Wait and see. Just wait and see. For we are caught in the grip of an atomic power that is greater than we are, caught like rats in a trap, waiting, waiting for that last awful moment. And it will come without warning, my friends. That blinding, searing flash in which the whole world... Stop it. Turn it off. Turn it off. with it. Oh. What's the matter, Ron? I can't stand it. Gosh, it's only a guy on the radio. Well, I can't stand it anymore. Uncle, where are you going? Oh! question of time, that's all. All you have to do is read the papers. People starving abroad, nations wrangling among themselves. It's just like 1918, only worse. And what can you do about it? Nothing. We're caught here like rats in a trap. Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> that's what the fellow said. I don't deny that he said it, but how do you know it's true? D Peavy, it was on the radio. Well, so is Hop Harrigan. Yes, I don't know, Peavy. This international situation's got me down. 
Worrying about Russia, worrying about China, worrying about the British Empire. It's got me so I can't sleep nights. You uh, sleep on your stomach or on your back? <laughs> What's that got to do with it? I don't see how you can be so calm, P.B. Why, the way things are going, don't you realize that any moment a bomb might drop through the roof here and blow this drugstore to smithereens? Well, let me know if you hear one coming. I don't understand you. I just don't understand your attitude. Now, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'll tell you. I, I've got a drugstore to run here. I can't run the British Empire, too. Oh, an isolationist? No, just a pharmacist. It... <laughs> well, maybe you're right, Peavy. I'm so darn sick of the international situation, so darn sick of hearing about it. That's why you came down here to tell me about it? Well, it's time we had a little fun, Peavy. That's what the world needs, is a little fun. Now, I can go along with you there. Here we've been under a strain all these years. The human mind can stand only so much. Sometimes I think it can't even stand back. <laughs> you know what I'd like to do, Peavy? I'd like to get on the old bus and fill up the gas tank and pile the family in the back seat. Just drive out in the country for a picnic, the way we used to in the old days. Sounds nice, all right. And by George, that's just what I'm going to do. Tomorrow's Saturday. I think I'll do it tomorrow, Peavy. How about it? Care to come along? Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, it's pretty early in the year for picnics, isn't it, March? Who cares? Paper says rain. Rain and colder. Let me tell you something, Peavy. Don't believe everything you read in the papers. Well, the ground will be wet. Too wet to sit on. Listen, I'm going on a picnic tomorrow no matter what. These fellows are going to blow the world to pieces while the kids and I are going to have one last fling before they do. I don't know where you get all this talk about blowing the world to pieces. Don't be a fool, man. All you have to do is read the papers. Here's a question for you homemakers. Can you name a food that is wonderful served in any course of the meal? The answer is Kraft's cheddar cheese food, Velveeta. Yes, it's one of the most versatile foods you can have in your refrigerator. You can spread it on crackers to serve with soups or appetizers, slice it in thin slivers to glamorize your favorite salad, or serve it with fruit for a delicious dessert. And for main dishes, or as a sauce for vegetables, Velveeta just can't be beat. It's so easy to make a smooth, golden Velveeta sauce. You just melt one half pound of Velveeta in the top of a double boiler. Then stir in one quarter cup of milk, and there's your sauce. Ready to add rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor to those vegetables or to dress up leftovers. Strand on fish, eggs, macaroni, and other Lenten main dishes, too. Remember, Velveeta helps supply high-quality, complete protein, milk minerals, food energy, and vitamin A. So for a glorious cheese sauce, for snacks and sandwiches, for a half a dozen uses, get genuine Velveeta. It's the cheese food of craft quality. Now, what about the great Gildersleeve? Well, he's having his own way for once. That is to say, it looks as if he's going on a family picnic in spite of everything, including the family. Here they all are, milling around the front porch, trying to get started. What about you, Leroy? You ready to go? Me? I've been ready for hours. Well, you can't go without a sweater, my boy. I told you that. Now, go get one. I don't see why I need a sweater. It's a perfect day. Perfect? It's freezing. It's not freezing, Marjorie. It's a fine day. Then why do I need a sweater? Because I say so. Get the sweater, Leroy, and comb your hair while you're upstairs. For a picnic? For a picnic. Now, you ready, Marjorie? I guess so. Do I really have to go on this expedition, Unky? It's a picnic, my dear. We're going to have a wonderful time. But there won't be anything to do. There'll be plenty to do. Get outdoors and enjoy the sunshine. Get next to old Mother Nature. Then we'll have to build a fire and cook the hamburgers. Plenty to do. I don't enjoy housework at home, and I don't enjoy it in the woods. Well, in that case, Leroy and I'll have all the fun of cooking. Unless perhaps Mrs. Ransom would prefer to do it. Well, maybe you can talk her into it. Can we come home if it rains? It's not going to rain. Now get that through your head once and for all. Now start enjoying yourself, confound it. Okay, okay, I'm having a swell time. Miss Gilsley, do you want me to put the lunch in the back seat? No, thanks, Bertie. Just set it down here. I'll take care of it. Well, nice and heavy. 
I thought you might need something heavy in case it rained. No danger of that. Oh, yes, sir. On a cold, raw day, there's nothing like a good, solid meal. But, Bertie... Hot coffee in the thermos in case you need something to warm you up. It's not a cold day, Bertie. Marjorie, don't stand there smirking. Go see what's holding up Mrs. Ransom. We've got to get started. Okay. I'll get this basket into the car. Aunt, we all have to go. Yeah, give me a hand with this, Leroy. Oh, boy, lunch. Yeah, lunch. Uh, uh, Leroy, did you put something on your hair? Yeah, you told me to comb it, didn't you? What'd you put on it? Aqua velvet. That's for after shaving. <laughs> That's not for your hair. But it looks good. What is bad for the scalp? I read that in the man. You put water on your scalp. I don't care if you're bald at 15. Okay. <laughs> now, if I can get this luggage compartment open. <clears throat> what the dickens are all these newspapers doing in here? Newspapers? Holy cow, those were for the paper drive last fall. You were supposed to meet them at school for me. Oh, <laughs> I guess it slipped my mind. Oh, well, I should worry. I got credit for 40 pounds. Uh, we'll have to do something about that. I don't think... Look at Leela. Leela. How do you like what I've got on, Frank Martin? It's a play scene. Well, let's play. <laughs> Uh, get those newspapers out of there, Leroy. Okay. This outfit is supposed to be for winter in Miami. Do you think it's all right for spring in summer fields, or am I rushing the season? Oh, I think it's just right, Leroy. How do you like my uh, loafer jacket? Oh, I think it's darling. You look so careless and sporty when you wear clothes like that, Throckmorton. <laughs> Well, I feel that way, too. <laughs> I suppose I ought to take along a raincoat. What for? Why, the sun is shining. Uh, it was a minute ago, anyway. Mm. I'd never forgive you if my play suit got wet. It might shrink, the girl said at the stall. I'd like to see that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if it gets wet, I'll buy you a new one, Leah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to shove the basket in now. That's fine, Leroy. And if you'll go get your sister, we can start. Yeah, we ought to start. I said go, Leroy. G-O. Well, I guess you heard me. Here she comes. Hurry up, Marge. We're going to start. All right, let's start. I'll just put the lunch basket in here. Uh, come on. Leela, you're in front with me. I was hoping I would be. Kids in the back. Come on, pile in. Thought we might drive up to those woods just the other side of Salinas. That's a slow place, Uncle. Huh? Yeah, a little stream runs through there somewhere. Oh, wait a minute, Uncle. Here comes Bertie. Bertie, what does she want? She's got an umbrella. We don't need an umbrella. We don't need that, Bertie. You never can tell with still see. Oh, well, grab it, Leroy. Thanks, Bertie. You're welcome. Have a good time if possible. Oh, I'm sure we will. Goodbye, Bertie. Good night. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Bertie. Oh, stop, Martin. Wait. Here comes Horace Hooker. Maybe he'd like to go with us. Oh, he eats too much. We'll need another whole basket if we... Oh, hello, Judge. <laughs> Good morning. Morning, all. Where's the fire? No fire, Judge. Going on a picnic. Care to join us? A picnic? No, thanks. Not in the middle of winter. But winter? It's practically April. Just the day for a picnic. Huh. April showers bring May flowers. Anybody can see it's going to rain. Do you really think so hard? I most certainly do. Where are you going? Thought we might try the woods over by Salinas. Well, that's quite a distance on your tires. Don't worry about my tires. Woods are a bad place in a thunderstorm. I'm not expecting one. And if it should rain, it just so happens I'm enough of a sport so I can stand it. We all are. You said it. Oh, yeah? Come on, Judge. Make up your mind. A picnic or an afternoon in the law library? My mind is made up, thank you. But if you all come down with pneumonia, don't blame me. Yeah, we won't. Stand back, you old goat. Make way for the younger generation. <laughs> bon voyage, Noah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, here's a place. Woods, grass, little brook. Ah, this place has got everything. It looks wonderful. Only what about the no trespassing sign? Oh, we won't worry about that. Probably the fellow just doesn't want people shooting his chickens. Well, maybe we ought to drive a little further, Stark Martin. I'd hate to get chased off. <laughs> Don't worry, Leela. If anybody tries to get tough with us, I'll handle it. Come on, everybody out. Get that luggage compartment open, Leroy. 
Uh, by George, I'm hungry already. Oh, my, isn't that funny? Yeah, it's the fresh air. Oh, it's so warm here in the sun. I declare, Frogmore, it's almost hot. Sure, what'd I tell you? And it'll get hotter. Get 10 cents a bunch for those in Chicago. You want a hand with that chow basket, Leroy? Yeah, I don't think I can handle it alone. Well, take it easy there. You'll blow a gasket. <laughs> now, you got the handle? Yeah. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, we'll just put it over here. Yeah. Hey, there's some swell rocks for a fireplace. Yeah, just the thing. Let you and me do the cooking, Leroy. What do you say? Give the ladies a treat. Oh, no, you don't now, boys. I want to do my show. So do I. I want to cook the hamburger. Okay, then I'll build the fire. Well, then I'll get out the sandwiches and see that everything's ready. Well, well, happy little family. I think I'll just lie here under the tree. <laughs> It's a funny thing. After I eat a big lunch at home, I don't feel like moving. Right now, I feel energetic. So do I. All right, Leroy. You burn up the paper plates, and I'll pack up the lunch basket. After that, I'll race you down to the creek. Ah, do you want to help me build a dam? Hmm, I might, or even a hut, or possibly both. Take off your shoes and stockings and come on in. Come on, Marjorie. Isn't it cold? Nah, just like Palm Beach. I notice your lips are blue. Yeah, get out of the water, Leroy. No use overdoing it. Back to dry land, everybody. Maybe it does, my boy. Why don't you and Marjorie explore it, huh? I feel the need of a little rest all of a sudden. Okay, how about it, Marge? We might find the fountain of youth. That's all you need, Leroy, but come on. Don't go far, children. We'll have to be starting back before long. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> what do you want to do, Leela? You like to walk through the woods a little? Oh, I don't feel like walking or anything. I just want to lie here on the grass and listen to the birds. Okay, that's good enough for me. <laughs> Let's listen to the birds, huh? huh? No birds. Must be some birds around here. Why don't they sing? Maybe they don't want to interrupt you. Uh, they're just lazy, that's all. <laughs> Uh, they won't sing, they won't sing. Oh, they'll start after a while. Birds are shy. Yeah, birds are shy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I never thought of that. Don't know if I'd want to sing myself for a couple of strangers. Oh, tell me a story, Frock Martin. I think I'd like that just as well as the birds. Hmm. Story, eh? Mm -hmm. What kind of story? Any kind, just so I like it. Well, I'll tell you a story about Jack and Minori. No, my father used to make me furious with that old Jack and Minori. <laughs> yeah, so did mine. Just for that, you have to tell me a real story. All right, I'll tell you a real story, Leela. You have to shut your eyes, though. They're shut. <laughs> well, let's see here. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful little girl with beautiful yellow curls. And she lived in Savannah, Georgia. <laughs> oh, I like this. And when she got to be about 16, she had dozens and dozens of suitors. All the boys from miles around were just crazy about her. Was her name Leela? Her name was Leela. <laughs> <laughs> her name was Leela, and she was the toast of Savannah. Uh -huh. At the annual Cotton Planners Ball, she led the cotillion. Mm -hmm. At the Bull Weevil Festival every January, she was the queen. And everybody wanted to marry her. 
including the son of the lieutenant governor of a nearby state. Was he the one she loved? No, no, don't rush me. Oh, ha, ha. It happened that Leela's father was a very rich man. But he wasn't. Just listen to the story, honey. Leela's father was a very rich man, and he was determined his daughter must marry a millionaire. But Leela, what did she want? She wanted someone who would make her little heart go pit-a-pat just by walking into the room. Mm -hmm. So every time a young man came round, Leela said to herself, Maybe this is the one that'll make my heart go pit-a-pat. <laughs> and she'd go downstairs to meet him, all excited every time. But every time, almost as soon as the young man bowed low and said, Good evening, ma'am, she knew he wasn't the one. Well, what about the lieutenant governor's bow? Oh, he was no good either. Oh. In fact, he was a little worse than the others because he was slew-footed. <laughs> but he was rich, and he was the man Leela's father wanted her to marry. Well, sir, poor Leela didn't know what to do. She told her father she didn't love the lieutenant governor's son, and he said, you can learn to love him, daughter. She told him she didn't want to get married at all. She just wanted to devote her life to charity. No, her father said, you've got to marry, and you've got to marry soon. You're 18 already. In another year, you'll be a disgrace to the family. Poor Leela. What did she do? She ran away. Oh. One night, she climbed out of her bedroom window with a few dollars she'd saved out of her egg money, and she went and bought a railroad ticket. And when she woke up next morning, where do you think she was? Why? In Yankee land. Oh. And she started walking down the street, and everyone turned around to look at her. She was so beautiful. Oh. <laughs> and all of a sudden, while she was looking up at one of the lofty six-story buildings... A man came bustling around the corner and bumped into her. Almost knocked her down. That's Yankees for you. <laughs> yeah. But then he apologized, and he told her he was sorry, and asked if she was all right. And as he walked away, what do you think? What? Her little heart was going pit a pat. What, did she know his name? She didn't know a thing about him, so she ran after him. Oh, did I? Mm -hmm, right down the street in broad daylight. Mm -hmm. He didn't know that, of course. Uh -huh. But she followed him till he went into the building where his office was. And she followed him right to his office. And what do you think it said on the door? What? Water, Commissioner. <laughs> <laughs> well, then what happened? He went into his office and worked all day. Oh. <laughs> but that night... Hello! Oh! Mm. There's a man coming with a big dog and a gun. What? The biggest dog I've ever seen. Oh, my goodness. Now, no, let's keep cool here. Where's the... Uh, <laughs> Is that a dog that's like a horse with fangs? <laughs> a nice doggy. Oh, he's a fine doggy. Yes, he is. Oh, get away from me. Oh, 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 boy, take it easy there, fellow. Oh, well, thank you. He was trying to kiss me. Uh, is this your property here? Yeah. Well, uh, we were um, having a little picnic. Uh, but if we've done any damage, we'll be glad to... Oh, no, no. Glad to have you. <laughs> well... Today, like today, everybody should be out here. Oh, that's awfully kind of you. Yeah. <laughs> Not at all. Drop over any time. Be fishing the creek pretty soon, Sonny. Come on, Prince. Come on, Prince. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a dog. <laughs> Say, almost 5 o'clock. I guess we'd better be starting home, children. Put the stuff in the car, will you? Okay. Ralph yeah. Martin, we were interrupted, remember? Interrupted? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Well, to make a long story short, Leela stayed up north and lived happily ever after. Did she marry the water commission? Oh, no. She found all Yankees made her little heart go pit-a-pat. <laughs> Come on, let's go home. <laughs> Bonnet with the blue ribbons on it, and we'll hit the old Dobbin to the shade. Through the fields of clover, we'll ride out to Dover on a golden wedding day. <laughs> oh, by George, this has been a fine day. Yes, sir, fine day. Oh, isn't 
that terrible. Why not at all? Just remember, this tire was due. You said it. Nothing left. You can't even really tap it. I wouldn't want to. Fine, faithful old tire. Right real rosy, I called her. She carried us all through the war, children. She's earned a rest. Get the jack, Leroy. Jack, Marge. Yes, yes. And there's another way to look at it. We've had a pretty good day. The paper said it would rain, and it didn't. That dog could have chewed my leg off, but he liked me. The man could have kicked us off his land, and he turns out to be a nice fellow. On the way home, we get a little blowout. Well, what better time for a blowout? Hey, um, the spare! Oh, don't tell me the spare is flat. No, it's got tread on it. <laughs> what a day. <laughs> Hello, Peavy. Have you got a three-cent stamp, old man? Three-cent stamp? Well, yes, you just a half. Thanks. Got a letter here I want to get off. No, make it an airmail if you got one there. Airmail it is. Yeah, thanks. Uh, by the way, how was the picnic? Oh, Peavy, it was lovely. Just lovely. Everything worked out. It didn't rain. The sky was clear. The sun was warm. Really felt like spring. Mm, sounds mighty nice. Yeah, it was. You can forget how good it is just to be alive, Peavy. You know that? We get so wound up in business and politics, one thing and another. If you ask me, we don't know whether we're coming or going half the time, including me. Mr. Gildersleeve, you're the last man I'd expect to hear that from. Well, I did a lot of thinking today, Peavy. Guess I haven't done any of that in a long time either. And I got to thinking while I was lying on the grass there. You know, it's a pretty good old world after all. Or it could be. And anybody who talks about blowing it up, anybody who sits by and let them start another war, the way they're talking in the newspapers. Well, here, I wrote a letter to my congressman. I haven't sealed it yet. I'll read it to you. Honorable George R. Rumbauer, House of Representatives, Washington, D.C. Now, see here, Rumbauer. You call yourself a representative? Well, start representing. We just had a war, and we didn't put you in office to start another one. So get your big feet off the desk and get busy. Or have I got to come down there myself? Because believe me, Rumbauer... Campfire Girls of America are celebrating their 34th anniversary this month and a proud record they've achieved, too. Praise certainly is due the more than 360,000 members of the Campfire Girls who made such splendid contributions to war service here at home. The aim of the Campfire Girls is to perpetuate the spiritual ideals of the home and to stimulate and aid the formation of habits making for good health and character. Among the Campfire Girls, there is no distinction as to class, race, or creed. These girls learn by doing, and since their beginning in 1912, millions of girls have been given practical training in citizenship and homemaking. They are America's citizens of tomorrow. The Campfire Girls need the continued support of everyone in the community, women and men alike, for youth is the greatest potential for the protection of the American way of life that we aim to preserve. Congratulations to the Campfire Girls from all of us. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. <laughs> Good night. It is written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekin. Leroy, Marjorie, and Bertie are played by Walter Tetley, Louise Erickson, and Lillian Randolph. Shirley Mitchell plays Leela Ransom, Judge Hooker is Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand is Mr. Peavy. This is John Lang speaking for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Now, a tempting lunchbox suggestion. Combine tangy golden Kraft salad mustard with your favorite cream cheese and salad dressing. You'll find this makes a wonderfully appetizing sandwich spread. For another tasting thing treat that's sure to score a hit at lunchtime... Blend Kraft salad mustard into delicious golden fillings for deviled eggs. And remember, there's also a mustard in the Kraft line for sharper taste. It's the Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Be sure to buy both delicious varieties. Get Kraft quality mustards on your next shopping trip. <laughs> This is NBC.